Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be talking about some fictional worlds that I would love to live in. And one thing I noticed while I was making this list is that there are a lot more worlds I would not want to go to than there are that I would want to. So at some point I'm going to make a video with a list of worlds I would not want to live in and why. But today we're going to be looking at the sunny side of the fictional world. And I have six from novels, and then I have three other ones that are just worlds that I think would be awesome to go into. And they are represented in among many other ways uh, in fiction. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right on in. And I think one of the most obvious answers for us fans of fantasy would be from The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, and that is The Shire. Now, The Shire is probably people's first thoughts when they think of this, especially when it comes to fantasy. And can you blame them? It seems like it's just such a wholesome place, a magical place, uh, just a lovely place to sit down and have dinner and, you know, drink some tea. I don't drink tea, but maybe if I was in the Shire, I would want to. And as somebody who really does enjoy being in nature and like going out into the woods and just being away from like city life and exploring and just getting out and being, you know, away from things, the Shire just seems like such a chill place to be. I know there are some like Shire inspired Airbnbs and I I think there's one that's not all that far away from me uh, and I have thought about going and staying I think there's like a full you know replica of it somewhere in New Zealand but even just like a little bit of it would be really cool to see and stay in obviously uh, the charm that really comes through in the movies and the books there's just something so special about the Shire it just seems like such a special place and obviously that warm and cozy feeling you get from it is something that I think most fantasy fans can understand and, and understand why one of us would want to go and stay and visit there obviously the Lord of the Rings, some crazy stuff happens and bad things happen, but the Shire specifically is a place that I would still love to go. You know, if I can avoid all of the bad things that are going on and not be involved in them, and I just got to chill in the Shire other than the one thing that happens at the end of the series, it seems like a great place to be. Next up, I have the Bobbyverse series. And if you don't know what the Bobbyverse is, it is a series where a human brain is basically put into a computer and it goes crazy from there. And honestly, it sounds crazy, but the idea of being a self-replicating robot that is like different versions of yourself being made over and over again sounds pretty fascinating and terrifying at the same time, but I do think it would be something really cool. And as somebody who loves space and just like uh, wishing that I could go to space is like one of my like lifetime dreams. Like I know people really hate the space tours and stuff and all of that, but if I, like I get the chance where it's like feasible for me to go to outer space, even if it's just for a little bit it's one of those things that I would absolutely take and would love to do and the idea of being a self replicating robot out in outer space getting to see all kinds of crazy things getting to you know go throughout the cosmos and just explore is uh, something that I don't think I could pass up it's just kind of like a dream I've had since a kid to like go to outer space and so to be able to to fulfill it in such an interesting way I think it you know how how could you pass that up now obviously the downsides to it are you're alone in outer space and you really only have your yourself <laughs> to deal with but honestly, I think it would be worth it to see some of the things that are out there. Obviously, the universe is just ever expanding and, you know, some people would argue an infinite number of possibilities. I would love to go and do that. If you have not read this series, I highly recommend it. It's a really good time. It's a good blend of like hard sci-fi uh, with like comedic humor and everything, kind of similar to Andy Weir. Uh, but honestly, I think it's one of the best sci-fi series actively going on right now. I think a new book is coming out very soon. So now's not a bad time to jump into the series. Next up, and this will not be a surprise for a lot of people who are my age because we kind of grew up with the series, and that would be Hogwarts slash just the wizarding world in general. Obviously, this comes with the caveat that I want to be able to use magic in this situation. I don't want to just like go and not see the castle because it looks like a rundown thing or however the magic is explained in the books. I can't remember. It's been so long. But I think one, those movies just hit me at the right time. The books hit me at the right time. I'm just the perfect age for Harry Potter to really affect me. It's the book that really got me into reading as a kid and just so many things. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that. But getting to go to like Hogwarts and just experience all the things that are talked about in the wizarding world, I, I do think that obviously there are some treacherous things and bad things happening and all kinds of things with Harry Potter but man to just get to go and like experience Hogwarts like imagine being a first year at Hogwarts when Harry Potter is not there and you know all kinds of crazy things are happening like peaceful everything how could you not want to like sit and learn magic and get to interact with all these animal uh, you know magical creatures and quidditch and just all you know all these kinds of things it's just 
I think most people, like I said, my age, have like dreamed about getting a letter and going to Hogwarts and all that fun stuff. And obviously it just seems like such a, a magical place. The, the films, you know, some of the shooting locations are beautiful, which, you know, I think there's a train that you can ride that is the exact route that it goes uh, in the movies for Hogwarts, which I mean, that would be awesome to do. Just all kinds of little things like that. But the Wizarding World definitely, obviously with the caveat that I do get to use the magic. That, I mean, that's kind of the whole point. I don't want to just not <laughs> in this situation. So uh, once again, Harry Potter, honestly, we, we barely get to see so much. We get to see really just a few locations in, in the stories that, you know, there's probably so much to explore. I haven't actually played the games yet. I need to do that because I think that would be a pretty good time. Next up, we are going back to science fiction. And this is from the Murderbot series. And it sounds kind of crazy because if you read Murderbot, it seems kind of awful. You know, you have giant corporations being corrupt and all kinds of things. Now, I don't want to be Murderbot in this situation. But the world that Murderbot is set in seems to be kind of like almost a near post-scarcity kind of world with like super advanced technology and all kinds of things. And once again, as somebody who really loves sci-fi and getting to explore those like ever advancing technologies and just, you know, th that next stage of like human technology and just human living and getting to spread throughout the cosmos and everything. It, it, it seems like a world that I would want to live in. And honestly, like giant corporations controlling everything isn't all that different than what we have going on right now. So like, let's really bump up the technology level. Let me explore space some. And uh, you know, maybe if I'm lucky, I get to cross paths with our murder bot friend here who is a little bit different than everyone else. Once again, this is another series that if you have not read, uh, I will say the last book didn't really like work for me as well as some of the past ones did. Uh, and every murder bot book is very similar. So, I mean, if you read the first one and don't like it, you'll know that the series probably isn't for you. But I had a really good time early on with these books. And, you know, maybe they haven't aged the best for me as I have read more and more and gotten a little bit more into hard sci-fi. But that first All Systems Red book is, it was just a good time. And it, you know, I think this is kind of a surprise pick because, like I said, the, the world that is painted through Murderbot doesn't seem all that great. But I just feel like with as many options as living that you would have in that world that, you know, you can find a pretty happy place to live and just get to explore all this technology and just, you know, a good time. Next up, I have Mistborn Era 2. Not Era 1, Era 2 specifically. Uh, once again, this comes with the caveat that I have access to some of the magic. I, I don't need to be a full-blown Alamancer, Mistborn, or whatever, but I, I want to be able to do something cool. Uh, a coin shot, you know, being able to fly, whatever. I, I want to, you know, have some access to the magical system, but I found the post era one world to be interesting because it kind of comes into that like steampunky or not steampunk but into that like steam era where you know you they're just starting to get radio they're just starting to get cars all these little like technological advancements sound really cool just enough where like society is really starting to grow and develop but there's still magic and i think that is very cool obviously there are some like crazy things going on and everything but i think for like the average person who was living in mistborn era 2 like they they weren't really all that affected by a lot of the things that are going on. Crime happens today, obviously, like it happens everywhere, but for a lot of people, they're not directly affected, right? And that's kind of how I feel about if I were a slightly underwhelming uh, magic user in Mistborn Era 2 that I probably didn't wouldn't have all that much to worry about. And that would be fun, you know, uh, getting to experience like that technology for the first time while still having magical powers. I just think it would be really cool. And another thing that I would find fascinating is you still have that weird blend of like the past wasn't that long ago in Mistborn Era 2. So like there are obviously some people who are still very firm believers and they believe the things that are happening, but it's just kind of starting to fade into like None of that really happened. That was all, you know, myth and legend and all that kind of stuff. And to like be a part of a society where that like active transformation is happening would just be like a cool little thing for me as somebody who really enjoys studying like religion and how it affects society and those kinds of things. And then my last choice from books is Narnia. Now Narnia might seem to be a little bit of a strange choice because it is kind of childish and everything, but there's just something kind of magical about Narnia. It almost has a similar, you know, feel as the Shire, uh, especially when you know, we're ignoring the bad stuff, right? This is like best case, scenario Narnia where like everything's chill and you're just having a good time and like Santa Claus is there <laughs> and all kinds of like the funny things and you just kind of get to live and explore and be with talking animals and just all kinds of things and get to experience some of that magic of Narnia. I read Narnia when I was pretty young and I remember really enjoying it and having a good time and like the idea of Narnia 
uh, I don't know, it just kind of gives me that like warm feel feeling of like coziness and protection and adventure. And it's that real sense of adventure that really sells me on Narnia. I feel like it's just a world that you could go out and explore and just, you know, have all kinds of fun. And like I said, it's really that cozy. I don't know why I feel so cozy because like a lot of bad things happen in Narnia, especially in the books. Like there are bad people there and everything, but I don't know. There are just some ideas of how outlandish it is and just kind of how silly and ridiculous it is that ha has always drawn me to that world. And then three other worlds that I really wanted to mention just because I thought they would be fun. One is Star Trek. Once again, a post-scarcity world where you're just kind of going and exploring the universe. Obviously, there's kind of a theme there for me when it comes to some of these sci-fi picks. Getting to do that, the just getting to meet new societies and creatures and just explore all of that just really worked for me. Obviously, bad stuff can happen in Star Trek, but there's like a, a different level of Star Trek. Like if I'm not on the Enterprise with a crazy captain and all these things are happening, I just get to go like be a scientist and explore and like observe from a distance. Like that sounds so awesome and I would get to see things that would blow my mind and it would just be awesome. Another one, once again, this comes with the caveat of being able to access some of the magic. In this case, I would probably want to be a firebender and so that's from Avatar The Last Airbender. Uh, I think this is just, I think a lot of people my age, once again, got attached to this series and the idea of being able to like use an element. <laughs> and so yeah, it's just one of, another one of those where sense of adventure, not, not so much cozy, but like getting to access to the magic, this uh, expansive world that you could go and explore. Obviously don't want to be involved in the war that's going on in the TV show. Maybe, uh, I don't, and I also don't want to be all the way to like uh, Legend of Korra era where like society is like super advanced and everything. Maybe like somewhere if we split the difference in there, like society is just still kind of starting, but not super advanced yet, but it's not like super uh, in the past either. I, I don't know exactly what the timeline is there. And I know it progresses like really fast with the TV show, but that is another world I would like to be in. And honestly, the, my last choice might be my number one. And that is Pokemon. I love Pokemon and the idea of like getting to collect my favorite Pokemon. You know, this is a game I've been playing since I was a kid. And if I could, you know, have an Arcanine running around with me, I think my life would be, uh, as complete as it ever could be. And just getting to go, once again, sense of adventure, getting to explore uh, with pets, like, come on, how awesome would that be? Ma basically magical pets, like that That sounds pretty awesome. So that that is honestly, Pokemon is probably my number one. But that is all for me. And uh, I would love to know what world you would wanna go to and why, because uh, you know, there's a lot of stories out there and I'm sure there's a lot of worlds people would want to go and explore. But that's all for me. And as always, have a good one.